This is not Beast Wars, don't sue me. Hey, my name is Jobby, and Beast Wars Transformers is a 90s show that I talked about two times before. So if you wanted to learn more about my introduction to the Transformers franchise, check out those two videos, I think they're pretty good. As for this figure, the Perfect Effect Beast Gorilla is a representation of Optimus Primal's final form, also known as Optimal Optimus. But because this is one of those fancy third-party Transformers, the figure doesn't have that name, don't call your lawyers, Hasbro. All legal jokes aside, I was really excited for this figure, because I actually grew up with the original Optimal Optimus toy. And while it wasn't the best, I had some fond memories of putting playing with it in the bathtub. So when I heard that the third party company Perfect Effect was remaking the figure, I had to jump at the chance, no matter the cost. As a result of this irresponsible purchase, I am now completely broke? Holy shit, thank you guys so much, P.O. Box coming soon. The painting and the sculpting on this figure is it's almost perfect. The design of this figure honors the original Optimal Optimus while enhancing that design with an insane amount of mechanical detail and some anime-esque proportions. And by anime-esque, I mean shorter torso and longer legs. By no means is the figure show accurate, but it's definitely sexier. And the original's iconic colors are rendered in beautiful metallic paint. Except the orange parts, I believe those parts are unpainted, which is no problem for me. More unpainted parts on Transformers means an overall more durable product. And yeah, you barely have to worry about chipping the paint on this guy. Now the Beast Wars purist in me is a bit disappointed that the figure's not completely show accurate. But I gotta be honest with myself, Optimal Optimus wasn't the best design. He was excessive and the colors were kinda gross. So the fact that Perfect Effect could take that goofy design and make it legitimately threatening and cool, my hat's off to you guys. But then I take it right the fuck back because the painting on the face is a bit messy. What happened? The blue is bleeding everywhere. And there's a part of me that would've liked the head sculpt more in line with the masterpiece Optimus Primal. I don't know, this face doesn't quite feel like the character to me. But that part's just a nitpick. The head sculpt is fantastic. Another thing that's fantastic is this guy's weight. Boy is he heavy. I'm sure that's due to the sheer amount of plastic on this guy and some parts of die-cast construction. It's a lost art. Now so far my cold touch technique could only pick out the feet as being die-cast, but there might be more die-cast pieces on the figure I haven't found yet. I gotta admit, I don't remember how Optimal Optimus played into the story of the show, so correct me if I'm wrong. I think Optimus Primal got this form when he took in the original Optimus Prime Spark. I only mentioned that because you get a matrix of leadership. At least I think that's what that is. It's a great detail and it's perfectly painted. And if we move down to his legs, you can flip out these parts to reveal some missiles. Another flip out feature are these shoulder cannons and these things look great it's a shame they're not die cast would have been a cool feature you could always lock them into the shoulder but i find that's a little less fun than moving them all over the place and speaking of moving all over the place this is where i have some major complaints the waist swivels and the thigh swivels are way too loose and it almost feels as if they can snap at any moment this makes the figure feel less solid than it looks and makes it less fun to play with what a damn shame. I understand that there's gonna be some quality control differences between Takara and third party stuff, but even the DX9 Gavolt has a ratcheting waist swivel. This figure could have benefited from something like that. But if the loose waist is too much to handle, you could always lock it in with this tab. No more waist posability, but it feels just a bit more solid. The thighs are still shit. But at least you have a wait a minute. The only accessory with this figure is this cool looking gun. And that plugs right into his hand, and you could wrap his individual fingers around it. But individual fingers is not all this figure. Bigger head. Ball joint at the head. Can look up that far and look down that far. Rotation at the arm. Forward movement at the shoulder. This big ass fin can move out and rotate. Shoulder pad moves out. Arm moves out. Bicep swivel. Bend at the elbow. Swivel at the wrist. Rotation at the thumb. And as previously mentioned, individual fingers. Of course, there's that loose waist swivel that I should be careful with. Ball joint at these things that allows clearance for a rotation at the leg. The leg can move back that far. Beautiful spread. Fucking loose thigh swivel. Bend at the knee. And technically, you can get a double bend, but that's more for the transformation. Down at the ankle. A beautiful beautiful ankle pivot, and something that most Masterpiece Transformers don't even have. <laughs> ankle swivel, get your shit together. Whose ability on this guy is truly fantastic. It's just a shame about that waist and thighs. As for the size, this may be one of the biggest Transformers I've ever had. Here's Figma Madoka Kaname, SH Monster Arts Godzilla, Masterpiece Optimus Prime, Masterpiece Cheetor, and the Masterpiece Optimus Primal. And these two look damn good together. So it shouldn't be a surprise that this guy can transform. But that's not all he can turn into. That's right, this guy is a quadruple changer. So if you don't have that catchy song in your head by now, you will.
and here we have the gorilla mode. Transformation to this mode was a bit of a mess, but it's satisfying when you get the hang of it. And unlike the robot mode, this guy does not even attempt to be show accurate. And in my opinion, it's better off for it. The new mechanical chest looks great. The proportions of the long arms and the short legs are perfect. And that head scope is I like it a lot. It's a far cry from the show's friendly face and the original's 90s tryhard face. This guy looks more like a Zoid, and that's not a bad thing. And I even say that this mode is more fun to handle than the robot mode. Almost. Yes, this waist connection is not the best, but if you get it properly balanced, it's not a problem. Posability on this mode is basically the same as the robot, except the shoulders don't move out as far, and the head is limited in its swoop. But his mouth can open, and that's never a bad thing. You could even half close it to give him a growling look. The posability on the gorilla gives you a lot of display options, but I wish the waist plugged in better. And going from robot to gorilla, this guy loses some height. Marika Godzilla Prime? Cheetor? Primal. The beast mode is so cohesive and independent from the robot mode that I get the feeling that Perfect Effect designed the figure with these two modes in mind. The next two modes feel like a bit of an afterthought, just like the original toy. <laughs> And here we have the truck mode. Alright, this mode's a bit of a stretch. But to be fair, the original was a bit of a stretch. Now I can't fault the figure for being true to its roots, but it doesn't change the fact that the roots were kinda shit. But it's a charming kinda shit. But I do think that the obvious arms could've at least plugged into somewhere. They just kinda sit there and that's a little annoying. But as someone who grew up with the original toy, I can't hate on it too much. At least it rolls good. Being so low to the ground, of course this mode won't be as tall, but it's definitely very long. <laughs> So I'm not gonna mince any words here, truck mode is kinda terrible, but it's fun and nostalgic and I can't get mad at that. As for his final <laughs> mode, I pretty much feel the same. Now going from truck to jet is a little more complicated than it seems, so I'm just gonna half transform it back into robot mode. It makes my life easier and fuck off. And here we have the jet mode. Just like the truck mode, this one's a bit of a stretch. It's obviously the robot mode lying down on his face, but I will give Perfect Effect credit. They tried to make the jet mode more cohesive by tucking in the arms. However, this is not show accurate, the original looked much worse. Fortunately for me, you could reposition the arms to get him into a more show accurate mode. That looks fantastic in a terrible way. And you can open the cockpit to reveal nothing. However, I do enjoy how wide this thing is. I mean, that wingspan is insane, but not too much in terms of height. <laughs> Now the jet mode and the truck mode may be objectively terrible, but overall, I love this thing. I can't say this figure will be everyone's cup of tea, but if you grew up with Beast Wars and had the original Optimal Optimus toy, this figure is definitely a nostalgic treat. If the figure was more solid with the waist swivels, the thigh swivels, and the backpack in the gorilla mode, he would have gotten the rare triple kiss. So here's hoping to a perfect effect Dragon Megatron, or an official Takara Masterpiece Optimal Optimus. They'll probably release that when I die, after all they're only a Dinobot right now. But a huge turning point for some people, including those who love the original figure, this guy cost a bit of a fortune. Sure, it's not Megatron. Megatron bad, but it's not insignificant. And this review would be absolutely impossible if it weren't for you guys on Patreon. Thank you so much for contributing to my downward spiral. And an extra thank you to the crazy bastard who made the final push to our goal. God damn, bless your soul. Due to how Patreon works, I don't get that amount of money right away, so I'll have to wait until the beginning of July until I can open up the P.O. box. After that, you guys will be able to send me stuff to review and I'll give you a shout out. More details when I finally announce the damn thing. I'll probably end up opening the P.O. box around the time I announced the giveaway winners. Remember that's happening? Check out my Figma Saitama review for more details on that. So there's no denying that the Beast Gorira is slightly overpriced, so I suggest you get this figure only if your love for Beast Wars is borderline autistic.